Award-winning novelist Colson Whitehead is considered one of America's greatest storytellers. The New York Times best-selling author made history by becoming the first writer ever to win Pulitzer Prizes for two consecutive novels. He's also one of only four people who have won two. He won in 2017 for The Underground Railroad and this year again for The Nickel Boys, which is out in paperback today. It tells the story of Elwood Curtis, a young black boy who is unfairly sentenced to a harsh, harsh juvenile reform school in the 1960s. Colson Whitehead joins us from his home in East Hampton, New York. Good morning, Colson. Thanks for being with us. Congratulations on the on the two Pulitzer Prizes. You were here before when the book first came out. I can't remember whether whether you'd won yet, but uh, that's a pretty cool feat. Um, I want to talk about this book again because. Um, it seems so relevant today. I mean, it's about, uh, uh, it takes place in the 1960s, and it's about an actual real reform school, or sorry, it's based on one, which, which you actually visited. Um, why, why did you, why, what made you pick that, st that story? What was it that made you want to tell that story? Well, you know, it all comes around, you know, again and again. So uh, after the summer of 2014, with the Ferguson protest and Michael Brown being killed, um, I came across the story of the Dozier School, a reform school in Florida, a lot of abuses. Um, I never heard about it. And it seemed the same way that we have these you know, police brutality uh, events caught on, on video, how many are we not seeing? And so if there's one place like Dozier, how many other reform schools that are terrible and abusive uh, are there, and so it stuck with me. So, it, the the idea of the book was born out of that terrible summer of 2014, and, and here we are again. And here we are again. I mean, you've seen this before. You grew up in New York in the 1980s. I grew up in New York in the 1960s. I feel like I've seen this story before, but the conversation often ends up fading out. Do you feel that it actually may be different this time? Uh, yeah, 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 I mean, I think you're, you're correct. We talk about police brutality, we have a conversation, and then it dies out. And in the 80s in New York, it was Eleanor Bumpers, Michael Griffith. Um, uh, I think this time does feel differently. You know, I've written two books recently, one about slavery, one about Jim Crow, and we see how much has not changed. But it does seem, in terms of how widespread the protests are and, and, and how big and prolonged that and we have seen, you know, a few local, city, and, and state uh, police reform uh, efforts put in. So uh, you're encouraged. It does seem very different. So we'll see. I am encouraged, reluctantly. You know, there's so much reluctantly. To the contrary. <laughs> That's interesting. Yeah. Um, I'm a New Yorker. You're. So. <laughs> okay, I know. I know that feeling well. Um, you found that after you wrote the Underground Railroad, you found out something very interesting about your own ancestry. What was it exactly? Well, I was doing a lot of interviews, and I would say that you know I have so many ancestors, so I don't know about because they're lost in the void of slavery. And so I had a an uncle who got very mad and said, "Don't you know about this person? Don't you know about that person?" Mm -hmm. So there's a, a man named uh, Colson who was a slave in Virginia in the 1840s, 1850s, who bought himself out of slavery. And then kept working, and then bought his daughter out of slavery. Who you so, were named after? You know, they're, they're like, I was named after Colson, yeah. So, um, you know, I've had ancestors, ancestors who died in the plantation, ancestors who were freed, who freed themselves, and that's like the Black American story. There's so many different kinds of uh, of, 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 of ways of, of of being enslaved in this country, and some of us made it out. Your, uh, your previous book, The Underground Railroad, is being uh, made into a series by Barry Jenkins uh, for Netflix, I believe. Can you, can you tell us anything about that? For Amazon, yeah. Sorry, I mean, excuse uh, me. It, it'll be a 10-episode... Oh, no, yeah, it'll be a 10-episode uh, miniseries. One of the last things I did before lockdown was go to the set, and it was just really sort of magical to see hundreds of people um, bringing the story to life, uh, and Barry is such a genius. So um, I look forward to uh, it coming out. You know, I didn't really have, um, I had one suggestion that they didn't take. It was that a, a sort of a la Eddie Murphy in uh, The Clumps or Dr. Doolittle, all the white people should be played by uh, Walton Goggins, this one actor who I like, he usually plays like the redneck. So like old white lady, little white kid, Walton Goggins. Um, they didn't go in that direction, weirdly, uh, but I still look forward to seeing how it, 
how it turns out. Well, that's great. I look forward to that. And I gather you finished a new novel about a uh, crime novel that takes place in Harlem, which I really look forward to during the pandemic. You finished it. That's great news. Colson Whitehead, thank you so much. The Nickel Boys is out in paperback today.